data pre-processing. This refers to set of all activities that uh, um, Now let us clearly explore what a data set refers to from where can you get the data sets for you to work with followed by a clear pre-processing concepts. Coming to, this is the agenda that we are going to cover now. We'll be looking at uh, how the database looks like followed by the different sources from where you can take up download the data. Then how to import it into the Jupyter notebook and then how to split it for training and testing. We'll do two uh, initial pre-processing activities, missing value analysis, and we'll normalize the data. So this is how a normal uh, data set looks like. I have uh, snipped along with an Excel format to make you uh, give you a clear understanding that always any data set whichever we are going to use in this entire course will fall as a csv file either as a csv file or as a excel file other json and tables also you can use but we restrict to only this usage okay so if you look at this uh, this uh, the attributes will always be listed as a header of the file right so here they, okay here we have 13 attributes listed here the rows whichever we have okay so all the cells will be accumulated with these cells will be accumulated with data which can be of two types one is called as categorical categorical in the sense if you look at this month attribute we have values like march october the month name so this is we call it as categorical value and if you look at here this is called as your numeric value in numeric also we have two categories one either you can have continuous value see if you look at the column e which refers to the attribute ffmc these are all continuous values right so but if you look at uh, the area okay so the values are very the values are limited here you see only zero there are two more values one is one another one is two so if uh, the uh, all the values are limited to only two or three a finite set of values we say it is a categorical data okay and coming to the different sources from where you can download the data set because initially we can't always create our own data set we try to depend on an open source platform a lot many different type of data set you name it it is readily available on the web so the, these are the two important archives from where you can download your open source data set one is the uci repository which has uh, lakhs of data sets for you to start with followed by uh, a competition platform Kaggle. They are giving both the data set along with uh, the competitions. So if to start with if you go for uh, initial uh, that is the very old uh, competitions that was already closed you can get an idea. Okay. So and this is these are not only the uh, platforms that are available there are a lot many sources from where you can download your data. So I have given a clear uh, description Thanks to my students Siddharth for uh, coming out with this ex uh, detailed uh, data sets or the sources from where you can download. I have given it in my blog. You can, if you want, you can refer. Okay. And once these data sets are available to you, what can you do with that? To start processing this machine learning algorithm, initially in our lecture one itself, we have seen the machine learning model starts with collecting the data set. Now you know the source from where you have to download as a csv file or as an excel file once done what is the next step we have to proceed for the pre-processing activity how to do first we have to upload it or bring it on to your jupyter notebook okay so that's uh, what is the next activity and uh, you can download that open that to csv file into your uh, uh, jupyter notebook by using pandas we have seen in the pandas session itself or else if you don't want to have it on your local drive if you are working somewhere else you can directly open the url itself okay that is also possible third possibility if you are using google collab you can straight away open it there okay in the google collab session i have shown how to download and open a data set in. i have shown how to open a uh, the data set in the google collab environment okay now uh, this is uh, one more important activity that we want to know actually as at this stage you don't need but uh, this I have given as an uh, pre-processing learning activity okay always given a data set okay so we are going to make the system 
train with the data that we feed okay then how to test see we have a data set having some around some 10000 columns let's say these 10000 column are going to serve as a training data set for the machine okay but the same 10000 column is available as a purpose for measuring the performance of the algorithm also that's why we always end up with dividing the complete data whatever we have into training and testing data the normal proportion which we use 80% of the data will go for training 20% will go for testing it doesn't necessarily need to be like same this is a standard convention you can change according to your way so we'll shortly see how to divide your data set like this and how to do that see you in uh, by the default methods are available to do this or else we have seen the concept of slicing stride uh, etc right sizing across row slicing across columns etc that also we can use okay or else if you have you can create two different data set one you can specifically keep for training another one you can specifically keep for testing these are different combinations however you want you can do okay so we are going to have a look at uh, two important major pre processing activities one is missing value analysis another one is your normalization what is missing value analysis when uh, the data is being collected from different sources we don't know whether the all the columns will be filled up or not okay if a particular column is left empty normally in python we say it won't be filled up with the empty character actually here the empty actually in python the empty values are represented using a special variable called none capital n small o n e okay so none acts differently like an identity if you add up any value to none it will give you only that value but in contrast to uh, storing an empty value if you are retrieving data from some other source if it doesn't have any value python interpreter or the data set will assume it to be a na in value not a number okay so it is neither a none nor a value okay so it's assumed something to be uh, like you cannot say it is empty okay so what happens this nan if it presents if you perform any operation arithmetic operation over it it will return only nan as the result not the corresponding let's say 5 plus nan if you add it will return only nan so you can assume it to be a, like a value zero which we don't prefer so this is an important step where normally after uploading a data set to the execution environment we check whether the data set has any nan or not okay so if it is so we have to fill it okay either there are two possibilities one is if you don't want you can remove wherever any is present okay be it in the row or in the column you can remove but removing is not actually uh, a powerful activity because that particular row or that particular column may have actually uh, important information which we will last for other attributes okay in order to cope up that with that we go for missing value filling up filling up the missing values right <laughs> in order to overcome that we go for filling up the missing values so how to fill up that with what value you can fill okay so there are it's up to the uh, developer or it's up to the trainer of how you do you can fill all the values with zero that is one thing second is you can uh, fill all the values with the mean of that attribute or we mean represent is an average column so it won't affect that's why you can see and mode mode represents how in the value that is repeating maximally so that is also possible next one research says that so you can divide the data based on the output class and whichever class this particular value belongs to only that mean you can use okay so these are all different variations which we can use of our own but the concept is missing value should not be left as such either the rows and contributes to be removed or it should be filled up properly okay so having done that now your data set is complete without nan so we go for normalization right so this normalization uh, the purpose is that 
uh, each and every attribute will go in a different different range right the range of values that you get on a even on a particular attribute you cannot uh, always uh, say that it's standardized so what we do in order for better visualization if i want to draw a graph out of it i should have the range possibly to identify right for that it's always a standard uh, convention to convert the values that resides as an attribute call values of the attributes to a standard range between 0 to 1 okay so that's uh, what we call as normalization again normalization you can apply any strategy as you want a very simple strategy is that x is equal to x by maximum value that's one normalization right identify the maximum value among a particular attribute column replace each every cell right x is equal to x divided by that particular maximum so in the way the maximum value divided by maximum will give you 1 and all the values will range between 0 to 1 okay normally in uh, what to say machine learning we go for min max normalization so the formula being x minus x minimum divided by x maximum minus x minimum it always states the effectiveness right so that is the uh, normalization we normally use and other uh, normalizations like z score standard scale or anything that is normalization is not restricted to this or that it's a mathematical concept which you can use to bring down all the attribute values into a standard range okay so that's it if i want my values to fall within a range of 1 to 10 what to do you have to first normalize multiply the values with that you will get the value okay so we'll continue the session in so we will so uh, on uh, we will continue having a look at feature selection reduction and about the correlation analysis in the coming session.